the Pacific Proving Grounds. This was the name given to the nuclear test sites, primarily in the Marshall Islands in the center of the Pacific Ocean. A total of 105 nuclear tests were conducted here between 1946 and 1962. The first test, named Abel, was conducted at Bikini Atoll, July 1, 1946. This was part of Operation Crossroads that saw two nuclear bombs tested in 1946 on the atoll, becoming the fourth and fifth nuclear bombs ever to be detonated. The purpose of the tests was to investigate the effects of nuclear weapons on military targets, specifically warships. Data had already been collected from the nuclear bombing of cities, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The first two bombs dropped at Bikini were of the same design as the Fat Man bomb dropped on Nagasaki, August 9, 1945. The first Fat Man dropped on Bikini was oddly enough named after Gilda, Rita Hayworth's character in the 1946 film of the same name. Naming the bomb after her was a reference to her not being a fat man, but rather a bombshell. The bomb was decorated with a photograph of Hayworth, cut from the June 1946 issue of Esquire magazine. Despite having destroyed two cities and having the potential to destroy the world, nuclear weapons had yet to develop the stigma they have today. Further underscoring the interest in this hot new technology, French fashion designer Louis Riard would name the bikini swimsuit after the test site shortly after Gilda's debut. Gilda was dropped from a B-29 superfortress named Dave's Dream of the 509th Bombardment Group. The bomb was a 23 kiloton device and was detonated 520 feet above the target fleet. The bomb missed its aiming point, the USS Nevada, but managed to sink five ships. As part of the operation, over 100 ships, numerous aircraft large and small, and more than 42,000 servicemen gathered at Bikini Atoll. Just under 100 of these ships would be used in the testing, including surrendered German and Japanese warships. Aircraft were also commonly tested during nuclear explosions, on the ground, and remotely flown. The next attempted test, Baker, took place July 25, 1946. This time the bomb was tested from 90 feet below the center of the fleet, making it the first underwater nuclear explosion. An estimated 2 million tons of water was thrown into the sky in a column that, along with a shockwave, sunk nine ships. Naturally, the ships were uncrewed. However, they were still full of life. Sheep, pigs, and mice inhabited the vessels. It was found that the first airburst test left minimal radiation on the ships and accompanying animals, while the second underwater test was much worse. After the second test, high levels of radiation on the island and surrounding area resulted in the evacuation of naval and test crews, who were still learning the dangers of nuclear fallout. This second test, Baker, was dubbed by the chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission the world's first nuclear disaster, a third test, Charlie, was cancelled. The biggest disaster of the testing was its effect on the homeland and way of life for 167 indigenous inhabitants of Bikini. The American government persuaded the Micronesian locals to relocate before the testing. Bikini, part of the Marshall Islands, was under American administration upon liberation from the Japanese during World War II until 1979 when it gained independence. On evacuation, the residents were told they would be able to return home after their island was irradiated by nuclear blasts. Many would naturally be disappointed. Most residents were moved to Rondrick Atoll and then later Keeley Island. Neither islands were suitable for sustaining life without American aid. Bikini would be irradiated a total of 23 times by further nuclear bombs until testing on the atoll ceased in 1958. The combined force of the tests in all of the Marshall Islands was equivalent to 7,000 times that of the Hiroshima bomb. In 1970, approximately 200 people native to Bikini returned home with the help of the U.S. government, 
but they were evacuated again in 1980, when scientists concluded all residents of the island were being exposed to high levels of radiation, likely from contaminated well water. Today, a handful of caretakers live on the island, and it is visited by tourists and the scientific community. Shown here is Castle Bravo, detonated March 1, 1954 at Bikini, and the first in a series of high-yield thermonuclear weapon tests. The device remains the most powerful nuclear device ever detonated by the United States. The bomb was lithium deuteride fueled and tested using the Teller Ulam design, a new generation of more powerful and compact thermonuclear bombs. The yield generation was 2.5 times the predicted 6 megatons at 15 megatons due to unforeseen reactions involving lithium-7. Men monitoring the blast from bunkers on nearby islands reported feeling the sensation that the earth was coming apart, and they reported cracks forming in their underground bunkers. Men observing the blast above ground felt as though they were experiencing instant sunburns. Radioactive contamination far exceeded expectations, and two other inhabited atolls within 150 miles had to be evacuated. Thermonuclear weapons were first tested November 1, 1952, at Eniwetok Atoll, also part of the Pacific Proving Grounds, located 305 kilometers or 190 miles west from Bikini Atoll. The first hydrogen bomb test here was codenamed Ivy Mike. Inuitok experienced 43 nuclear tests, which also ended in 1958. Residents of Inuitok were allowed to return to the atoll in 1980 after an extensive cleanup project, but many military members who participated in the cleanup mission would go on to suffer from health issues. Thermonuclear weapons, or hydrogen bombs, use both fission and fusion reactions, as opposed to just fission, like the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Fission bombs, like the Fat Man bomb, are commonly referred to as atomic bombs, atom bombs, or A-bombs. Technically, these terms can be used to refer to any nuclear weapon, as the energy from both fission and fusion comes from the nucleus of the atom. Fusion differs from fission in that instead of energy created from splitting atoms, energy is created by fusing light nuclei together, forming heavier nuclei, and releasing energy in the process. Nuclear fission of uranium or plutonium creates the conditions necessary for fusion in hydrogen bombs, where hydrogen isotopes are the thermonuclear fuel that will start the fusion process at around 100 million degrees Celsius. This heat is where the name thermonuclear bomb comes from. Hydrogen bombs can go off in layered stages of fission and fusion, with each fission reaction improving the efficiency of the fusion. In 1963, the Partial Test Ban Treaty restricted nuclear testing to underground only, removing any future of nuclear testing on the Pacific Proving Grounds. Future testing would primarily take place in Nevada, which included British nuclear tests. The British had also tested on remote islands in Australia in the 1950s. The Soviets primarily tested in Kazakhstan between 1949 and 1989. Hundreds of tests were conducted near the city of Simi, close to the Kazakh-Russian border. Some experts estimate upwards to 1.5 million people have been exposed in some way to the fallout from these Soviet tests over the years. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching. I hope you are aglow with some new information and that we shed some light on this matter. Fun fact, did you know Bikini Bottom from Spongebob is located at the Bikini Atoll? Explains the show a bit better. Take care, and have a nice rest of your day.